G'day. One of the laptops that come across this channel, which has now become one of my favorites, actually in the top three, and it surprised me very well, was the ASUS ROG Flow X13. And that had absolute great temperatures and fan noise, had the performance to match it, and it had a lot of features as being a two-in-one in a very compact form. Now, that was released in 2020, fast forward to two years later, in 2022, and Zeus has now created a new form factor in the Flow family. Meet the new Zeus ROG Flow Z13. What this is, is actually a tablet form. So it's like one of those surfaces where you have a detachable keyboard and it's also got a kickstand coming out. And guess what? This is a little bit different from a lot of those tablet form that you see. This has the new Intel i9 performance processor from 12th gen. And here's the catch. It's also got a discrete graphics, which is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050. So I have not seen a tablet that has a discrete graphics. There used to be one which was the Microsoft Surface Book, but now they've changed that Surface Book into a different form and it no longer has a discrete graphics. Whereas this, it's pretty much a class of its own now because it has a discrete graphics for a tablet. That's absolutely fantastic. So we're going to explore this Z13. We're going to have a look at the temperatures and the fan noise. We'll have a look at the features. And as always, I will be putting timestamps along this video so we can skip to the different sections that you may be interested to save you time as well. Before we get started, I do want to give my gratitude to say a big thank you to Intel for sending me this particular device so I can have a look at their new 12th gen i9 12900H processor in this compact form. Thank you very much, Team Blue. There are two options for the display for the Flow Z13. There is the UHD Plus and the Full HD Plus. Both have an aspect ratio of 16 by 10 and both have touch glossy displays. And the one I tested out was the Full HD Plus and it had also a refresh rate of 120 hertz and a brightness rating of 500 nits. I did test out the display in direct sunlight and I didn't have too much issues both consuming multimedia and also working on documents. And of course, in the shade, you shouldn't have any issue at all. Now, just beware that with the glossy display, you do get a bit of reflection, but with 500 nits, it's able to go straight through that. I also didn't find much edge glow or light leak around the edges. There are two speakers located on either side of the Z13. When I measured the maximum volume of the speakers, it managed to peak at 76.2 decibels. Now this is what I would consider okay, but as a tablet, because it's more than likely walked around the house or you're in outdoors, I like to actually hear a much more volume out of these speakers just to overcome a lot of the ambient noise. As for sound quality of the speakers, surprisingly, it's got quite a lot of bass. More bass than I was expecting from a tablet form. Normally, traditionally, it's really have pitiful bass from tablets, but this one, you do hear the bass. So much that I was actually thinking the balance of the speakers is more towards the low end, as still has very strong highs. And as for the acoustics, because they're side firing speakers, you do hear 360 degrees. And if you're in front of a user, it'd be nice to actually have an extra speaker firing towards the user will be also just to give that extra more volume, I think would be fantastic for the next duration. And we've got good clarity on the speakers. Audio sample of the speakers of the Z13 at 100% volume. This is a recording from 720p webcam 
from the Flow Z13. This is the video and audio unedited, so you can hear and see what the call in the webcam is like. And as always, I've got two top slots currently turned on. We've got my one street light turned on, and also the four down lights in this turned on as well for ambience. And I'll turn off my one street light off. Now, the two down lights in front of me is a bit far away, so there's not much light currently hit on my face. So this is what I consider a dark environment. If you're in an offense environment, you should get much more light than what I am at. And when I turn my one street light back on, and you'll see this hopefully adjust for the extra light. And as always, better quality light should give you better quality picture. And I'd definitely love to hear what your thoughts are of this video and audio from this 720p webcam. Put a comment below. We're gonna have a take a look around the back. Now on the very top right hand corner, we've got an eight megapixel world facing camera. And on the top here, we've got also where the microphone is for that camera. And then on the bottom left hand corner, we've got a nice little red tab, help you with lifting the kickstand up. And we've got quite a bit of tension on the hinge for the kickstand, which gives you very good confidence of it keeping the different angles for the kickstand when it's in tablet mode and you're laying at rest. So that's good to see that the hinge is well made. Now on the behind the kickstand, we've got a micro SD card slot, which is great. One of my hacks is I tell people if you need extra storage, just buy a micro SD card slot and it's nicely hidden away. So you don't have to have like a USB flash drive hanging on the side, which could be broken away. This is a nice way to add extra memory. So if you need to have on slow storage, so for example, like media is good or photos, you don't really need to be that fast. At least you can offload it to your micro SD card slot. And then we're on the bottom right hand corner, we've got also a slot for the M.2. Now this is the primary slot. It is held in by Philips head screw. I've just undid it to speed up time. And you'll just open this slot up here so you can see this up. And this is a 2230 format SSD, so PCIe. With the battery life test, I set the display to 200 nits brightness and also the volume of the speakers to 20%. And I managed to get two hours and 31 minutes for the modern office battery life test in PC Mark 10, 56 minutes for gaming, and two hours and 27 minutes for video playback in the Procon battery life test. Seeing the results, I'm not too surprised by the numbers as most gaming laptops don't have great battery life. And that's due to the discrete graphics mostly consuming a lot of power. And in this Flow Z13, it also has a performance processor as well, which gives it a double whammy effect. And to compound that problem even more, this is a compact form, so there's not much space to put a large battery. The weight of the Flow Z13 tablet only is 1.19 kilos, plus the type cover becomes a combined weight of 1.54 kilos, plus the 100 what power adapter becomes a combined weight of 1.94 kilos that you might be carrying around with you. As for the temperatures and fan noise, when I took my measurements, my ambient temperature in the room was 22 degrees Celsius, and the ambient room noise was 36 decibels. Now, before we get started, I just want to give you a reference point. Your average hand is anywhere between 33 to 34 degrees Celsius. Just to give you a reference point of either how hot or how cool, this computer could be. So I took a base measurement when the computer was idle and the hottest area on the computer measured in at a top of 35 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it had a maximum of 36 decibels. So it's practically quiet. And the average internal core temperature was 43 degrees Celsius. Then I put 20% load on the computer. It's pretty much average use. So that's tasks like office productivity work, surfing the web, streaming videos, and the hottest area on the computer, again, measured in a maximum of 35 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it did spun up the fan up to a maximum of 39 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 50 degrees Celsius. Then I put 50% load on the computer and the hottest area on the computer measured in at 39 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it hit a maximum of 40 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 64 degrees Celsius. Then I put 100% load on the computer and the hottest area on the computer measured in a maximum of 47 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, it hit a maximum of 43 decibels. And the average internal core temperature was 78 degrees Celsius. I also measure the back side of the tablet and the hottest area also measured in a maximum of 47 degrees Celsius. And as for the fan noise, of course, it stayed at 43 decibels. 
the Flow Z13 does warm up quite a bit once you put more than 50% load. Now this isn't really much of an issue on this particular computer because of being a tablet and all the heat is actually on the display on the top end rather than actually on the bottom end where the type cover is you really don't feel any heat there at all so even this computer is on your lap you won't, shouldn't feel any heat at all and once you're in tablet mode more than likely you won't be having more than 50 percent load on this computer more closer to the 20 percent load and that is absolute no problems touching this computer at all when it's running on 20 percent load let's have a little stability performance of the processor in the flow z13 this particular one's configured with an i9 12900H processor and looking on Intel website, it reports has a maximum turbo boost for the performance cores at 5 GHz and the efficiency core has a maximum turbo boost of 3.8 GHz. Now it doesn't really report on the base clock speed on the Intel website but looking on the Windows, it reports it has a base clock speed of 2.5 GHz for this processor. And I've had this computer running on 100% load for the processor, RAM, SSD, as well as the discrete graphics as well. That's put on quite a lot of load for over two hours. I've got this computer connected to mains power and set to turbo performance mode as well. And I can see that the speed of the processor is anywhere between 2.5 to about 2.8 gigahertz. So I'm just gonna average it around, I would say around about 2.65 or 2.7 is its average Speed. that's doing extremely well that it's above the 2.5 gigahertz for the base clock speed and we do have the discrete graphics running as well so which is actually taking probably creating just as much heat as the processor now we're going to have a look at the single core behavior of this i9 12900h processor we're going to start a single core task in citybench r23 and we'll start the clock watch as well and we'll see how the performance runs for this processor. So we've just now bumped itself up to about 4.5 gigahertz, I would say, for the first 10 seconds. And we have now reached about 4.5 gigahertz for the first 15 seconds. And it's pretty stable here, running at 4.4 to about 4.5 gigahertz. And just past the 30 second mark, again, we're pretty stable between 4.4 to 4.5 gigahertz. So I would say 4.45. And now we're starting to see just a little fluctuation and just a quick dip to about 4.3. But we'll quickly back up to about 4.45 gigahertz on average. And we're just nearly about finished for the single core task had a blazing one minute and probably about 30 seconds which is absolutely great to see this thing blaze through and i pretty much will say it's pretty much stable at 4.45 gigahertz all the way through for the single core task here's the results of the benchmarks for the flow z13 this particular unit i tested it on was configured with an i9 12900h processor with 16 gigs of ram one terabyte ssd and the GeForce RTX 3050 Ti. These are the results for Passmark, Citibench R23, PC Mark, 3D Mark, Crystal Disk Mark, Geekbench 5, Procon Office, Procon Photo Edit, Procon Video Edit, Fugan Photoshop, Fugan Lightroom, Fugan Premiere Pro, Fugan DaVinci Resolve, Blender, Boxmark, Furmark, Compute Bench, Octane Bench, Eugene Engine, and SpectreView Press. And some gaming benchmarks like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Far Cry New Dawn, Far Cry 6, Immortal Phoenix Rising, and F1 2021. Looking at the results of the benchmarks and purely looking at the numbers, you wouldn't have known the performance is coming out of a tablet computer. I must highly commend Asus for their thermal solution and how they integrated the new 12th gen Intel Core and also the GeForce RTX 3050 Ti. The performance is pretty much mind-blowing in a very compact form.
The Z13 does come with a keyboard cover and the keys are RGB backlit. You can configure it in the ASUS armor crate in the Aurora section. And there are four settings to the backlit, off, low, medium, and high. As for each keys, we've got good key travel and it's got quite a bit of bounce and tactile feel to each key. And we have a very smooth surface for each key as well. And we have good spacing in between and I will consider these keys a medium sized keys. It's actually quite a nice keyboard to actually type in. And as for the trackpad, we've got a glass, silky smooth texture to the trackpad and it is multi-gesture and it is also mechanical, which is hinged at the top and you can depress it in the bottom. As for the palm rest, it's got a rubberized texture rather than being the common velvet sort of texture. This one has a lot more grip. This keyboard overall is very, very comfortable to actually type on. I just want to test and demonstrate how well the magnets are for this keyboard cover. So we can pretty much pull apart. You do feel quite a bit of resistance and then it does snap in quite well there. Now, I'm just going to put a bit of pressure on there. Now I'm going to put a quite a bit, a lot of pressure. Now you would normally not put this amount of pressure on when you're typing. Uh, but I am putting quite a bit of pressure for that. To, and that's at the top here normally. But if you're putting it down here, we'll get even less as you can see. So it does take quite a lot to get that type cover to push down and not act at all. So I'm doing looking very well. Now I'm also gonna bring this even more extreme by putting it to, it's what I would say quite vertical for the top part. Now this is reason for this is because if you're working on a plane or a train and you have got this computer on the tray table and this tray table user had that nice little hole in front between the tray table and the seat in front of you and this is why this will be done. So this still has takes a lot. So if I'm typing, like I'm pushing quite a bit. I'm pushing quite a bit to actually get to that point there. But and you would never usually type that hard anyway. So that's doing extreme well, the magnets, even at this extreme vertical stage for the keyboard type cover. One of the neat cool features of the Flow family in the Zeus is that the computers have this port called the XG mobile port. Now the XG mobile port is pretty much a docking station with a graphics card built into it. How cool is that? So. This is something where you can actually get more power, get more ports, and also get more graphical power as well. So this is a great pairing with this Flow Z13. You've got this discrete graphics, which is uh, still a quite a powerful graphics, which is the RTX 3050. And with the XG Mobile, you can either get a 3070 or 3080. So that's absolutely fantastic. If you need more graphical power, you can always hook that up for better games or if you're doing more computations or even 3D graphics or ESO ad work as well. That makes it very versatile. With this new compact form factor, I am very pleasantly surprised by the performance and how the behavior worked on the new 12th gen i9 12900H processor. That is a performance processor that you would you normally see in a much thicker and larger laptop. And this is done in a compact form and it still held its ground without being thermal throttled. So that did very well. Now do bear in mind, once you do have a discrete graphics start to gear up or start to actually put on load, it does take a bit of load on the i9. And that's only because of the heat, extra heat. And this is a very compact form. So the thermal solution is trying to drive both of those hot elements. But still, I am very pleasantly surprised by this new 12th gen i9 1200H processor in this very small compact form. And this Z13, I'm still really loving this form factor and having to hold all that performance and including all the features, yet we are still able to get those performance from this laptop. And it's got nice and pretty as well too. Hope you find this video informative or enjoyed it. If you support my channel, 
smash that like button for me. And if you haven't done already, subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button screen. I do travel only every week. And if you want to support me further, I do have membership by clicking that join button right next to the subscribe button. I do try to upload a few new extra bits for you guys. And as always, imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting. And I'll see you next video.